We have just had an awesome weekend of back-to-back -back runs. Uh, I got a good 32 miles in on some really challenging coastal terrain in some biblical weather conditions in preparation for the Arc 2001. But welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. And welcome back to the Bucket List series. If you haven't seen episodes one and two, where we talk about our Bucket List half marathons and marathons, they're definitely worth going and checking out. In this, the final episode, we're gonna talk about our Bucket List ultra marathons. This is the video that I've been really looking forward to doing and talking about, but it's also probably been the hardest to put together. There's so many amazing ultras around the world now that I'd love to run one day. It's been quite hard to sort of condense them down into one video. Just before we dive into this video though, guys, we just wanna say we have just hit 10,000 subs at the channel, an amazing milestone and something we always wanted to achieve and we've done that. So to show our appreciation um, to you guys at home, to say thank you for all the amazing support you've given the channel, we are gonna be doing another Run For Adventure giveaway extravaganza. Very similar to what we did when we hit 5,000 subs, only for 10,000 subs, it's gonna be bigger and better and we have got some amazing prizes up for grabs. All the brands we contacted have been so supportive of the channel and given us some wicked prizes, so thanks for that, guys. But like I said, stay tuned for the end of the video to see what's up for grabs and how you can win it. Right, let's get stuck into the first ultra. Now, if I asked a lot of ultra runners to write me a bucket list of their races that they'd love to take on one day, I'm sure this race would appear on most of them. So it is the Western States Endurance Run, or otherwise known as the Western States 100. The run is steeped in history and has had a lot of media attention over the years with lots of superstar trail runners coming from all over the world to push their limits on the challenging 100 mile course. The race takes place on California's Sierra Nevada mountain trails each year on the last full weekend of June. It starts at Squaw Valley Ski Resort and then finishes at the iconic Placer High School running track in Auburn, California. The terrain can be pretty rugged and the race frequently showcases snow on the higher passes, but then later on the race, when you get in the depths of the valleys, the temperature can really rise and you can have some super hot, challenging conditions. Speaking of higher passes, the runners will run a total ascent of 5,500 meters and a total descent of 7,000 meters along the 100 mile route. From what I've seen and what I've heard, the atmosphere on the start is electric, with all them runners jostling for position on the start line with their head torches blazing at 5 a.m. in the morning. The runners have a 30 hour cut off to complete the race if they want to receive a bronze buckle, but a big percentage of the race is pushing super hard over the course to try and achieve the very much coveted silver belt buckle for a sub 24 hour time. The Western States Endurance Run actually started out as the Western States Trail Ride, where riders on horseback would compete over the 100 mile distance. Gordy Ainsley had completed the ride, the Tevis Cup, in 1971 and 1972. Unfortunately, in 1973, his horse actually pulled up lame at mile 29. So, as you do, in 1974, Gordy decided to run the race on foot and he was convinced he could complete the course in under 24 hours. 23 hours and 42 minutes later, Gordy was to cross the finish line and rewrite the history books, becoming the first person to ever run the Western States trail ride in under 24 hours, proving that runners could take on this mountainous, challenging route and complete it in just one day. Now, I know it sounds pretty amazing and inspiring, but before you all rush off to your laptops and computers and get signed up for the Western States 100, unfortunately, it is a ballot race because it is so popular. They do have a few slots available, uh, what they call golden tickets in America, where you have to podium at some pretty major trail races. So if you're not quick enough to win one of them golden slots, you might have to wait some time for your name to be pulled out of the hat before you can line up on that iconic start line. Anyone that knows
knows me or follows the channel knows that I love UTMB or Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc. We love going out to Chamonix and getting caught up in the atmosphere of UTMB week and maybe taking part in one of the races out there. It has become super popular and the race is known throughout the world. But there is a race that starts on the Monday morning of UTMB week that isn't as well known. And I suppose you could kind of call it the bigger, gnarlier, longer, scarier, more technical brother of UTMB and it is the PTL. The PTL is approximately 300 kilometers in length with 26,000 meters of elevation. The race has to be taken on in teams of two or three for runner safety and it starts on the Monday morning of UTMB week at 8 a.m. at the same iconic starting position of the main race. And then the 300 runners have 152 hours and 30 minutes to complete the super challenging but beautiful Alpine course and make it all the way back to that finish line in Chamonix. The organizers make changes to the route each year to give the runners a very unique experience, but also so they can discover the richness and the diversity on them Alpine paths in France, Italy and Switzerland within the Mont Blanc Massif. This race should only be attempted by runners with mountain experience. You're going to climb to heights of over 3,000 meters, you're going to cross glaciers, you're going to climb ladders, you're going to have to traverse along narrow ridges clipped into a rope high above the ground so it's definitely not for the faint-hearted. Because of its extreme nature you have to qualify for the race. Luckily for me a finish at UTMB qualifies you to enter to the PTL so this is definitely a race that I will be ticking off that list one day all I really need is a couple of teammates anyone interested right moving on to the next ultra on our bucket list and for this one we are staying in the good old UK and it is the joggle uh, for those at home who don't know what the joggle stands for, it is John O'Groats to Land's End. I'm sure there's lots of people out there that have heard of this because it is a very popular challenge to take on on a bicycle. Whether you be riding super quick and trying to break records or maybe taking the challenge on a bit more of a leisurely pace over a couple of weeks. There have been lots of records set along the route and some of them records are pretty bonkers. Someone completed the joggle on a pogo stick, on a penny farthing, on roller skates and someone even completed the joggle challenge completely naked. You can take the joggle on as an official personal challenge but there's also a organized race on the route each year put on by Ultra Running Limited. Obviously the downside of the joggle is it's all on the hard stuff, it's all on tarmac so super repetitive, really hard for the body to handle over that kind of distance and then you've got to think of the safety aspect as well because you're going to be running on some pretty busy roads. Just recently the challenge was taken on by the amazing British runner Dan Lawson who completed the joggle route in under 10 days which is a mind-boggling performance from a very talented runner. I actually rode the route in six days a few years ago with a really good friend. I still think to today it is the toughest physical and mental challenge that I've ever taken on. I was definitely broken several times over them six days and if it hadn't been for my good friend Martin being such a strong cyclist and kind of dragging me to the finish line I probably wouldn't have finished the challenge at all. I definitely don't regret taking it on it's still a massive achievement for me considering how bad I am on a bicycle but I've also got some incredible stories to tell about the adventure so I think it'd be awesome to be able to say that I've ridden and I've run the length of the country that I live in and if you think about the route starting up at Scotland at John O'Groats is pretty much downhill all the way home. Up next is a race that is definitely at the top of my bucket list and it's actually a race that I've tried to get in before but unfortunately I didn't make it through the ballot and it is Spartathlon. Now this really is a race that is steeped in history, well Greek mythology actually. The race is held in Greece each year and the 153 mile route retraces the steps of Pheidippides as he ran from Athens to Sparta just before the Battle of Marathon in a day and a half to seek aid against the Persians. Back in 1982 five Royal Air Force officers attempted the route and then the competition started the following year. The race starts in Athens at 7am in the morning and with all them runners from all over the world congregating at the start line it is supposed to be an amazing atmosphere. The runners have lots of things to deal with in this challenging race from the hot temperatures of the Greek sun by day to the cold temperatures at night 
but the runners also have to face a climb up to the high Sangas mountain pass which is a climb of 1200 meters which would be tough at the best of times but the runners actually hit this climb when they've already completed 120 miles. There's also 75 checkpoints along the way and runners face disqualification if they don't hit the tight cutoffs at these checkpoints. There's lots of race crew but also most of the runners will have their own personal support crew out on the course so this is supposed to create a really special atmosphere as you make your way around the route. Once you are over the mountain pass the race is pretty much all the way downhill to the town of Sparta. Having watched lots of videos of people finishing Spartathlon on Facebook and on YouTube it really does look like one of the best finish lines and atmospheres in the world. The race actually finishes at the feet of the statue of Leonidas, the Sparta king who died in battle fighting the Persians. A lot of the runners run up to that statue and kiss the feet of the statue and then they're presented with a laurel wreath to wear at the finish line. The race has grown quickly over the years and it is at the top of most ultra runners bucket list. So there's been a strict entry criteria put into place for the race. You have to run certain times over certain distances to qualify for the ballot and then it's just fingers crossed and you've got a hope that your name is gonna get pulled out of the hat. The other unique thing about the race is if you manage to run that qualifying time and you are lucky enough to get pulled out, you will go and represent your country at Spartathlon. So in the UK, you'd get to run for the British Spartathlon team, which I think would be an amazing experience. All the runners that I've spoken to about this amazing race, and some of them runners have run some of the biggest races all over the world, say that their experience at Spartathlon was the best race experience they've ever had, and nothing else has ever come close. So this is why Spartathlon had to make it on my ultra marathon bucket list. Right, on to the last race on the list and this is something different compared to all the other races that have featured on the video so far. And technically it's not actually an ultra marathon but it's definitely a mega challenge and I think it belongs in the ultra category and it is the World Marathon Challenge. I'd heard of this challenge before, but I only really thought that it was a challenge I'd love to take on one day when I was doing research for the Bucket List Marathon video. So, what is the World Marathon Challenge? The goal of the challenge is to run seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. So lots of running, a hell of a lot of traveling, not a lot of rest and very little sleep. The challenge starts with the Antarctic Marathon that featured in our marathon bucket list video. And then it's a quick pop over to South Africa for Cape Town. The third marathon is Perth, Australia. Then it's on to Dubai, then Madrid, then Fortaleza, and then finishing up in the good old US of A with the Miami Marathon. The World Marathon Challenge is an annual event that takes place at the end of each year and after that initial marathon in Antarctica, the competitors will fly by charter plane to all the other marathon locations around the globe. Successful participants will be recognised by the International Marathon Club which holds a definitive list of all the people that have completed seven marathons on seven continents in seven days. Obviously just completing this amazing challenge would be an awesome achievement but there is also a competitive element within the trip. The fastest combined marathon times or the average marathon times of the male and female categories are declared the outright winners of the overall challenge. The event is acknowledged by the Guinness Book of Records and the fastest male average marathon time stands at a mind-boggling 2 hours 45 minutes and 57 seconds. That was set by American ultra runner and Hoka athlete Mike Wardina. And the women's fastest average time is just as crazy. It was set by Dave Danish athlete Christina Madsen with a brilliant time of 3 hours 25 minutes and 57 seconds. But my favourite record has to be the one set in 2017 by Catherine Sun and Eric Shin. They became the fastest married couple to complete the World Marathon Challenge. Now as you can imagine an event like this where there's lots of traveling, lots of organization, lots of logistics, it doesn't come cheap. So if you wanna guarantee yourself a place on the starting line, it is gonna set you back 42,000 euros. Now, that seems like a ridiculous sum of money, and it is a ridiculous sum of money, but when you think about what you get, you get to run seven marathons in some pretty amazing locations. You get a trip around the world, albeit a pretty quick trip around the world, and I don't think you'll have a lot of time for sightseeing, but 
I don't know how I'm ever gonna pay to do an event like this, but I will find a way one day, and I am gonna be on that start line, and I'm gonna complete the epic World Marathon Challenge. So that is a wrap on the short bucket list race series. Really hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. I also hope it highlighted some amazing races around the world that maybe you didn't know existed. Also, I hope it's got you motivated towards racing again when these crazy times are over. And there was something else that I needed to mention at the end of this video. What was it? Um, oh yeah, we've got to do the Run For Adventure crazy giveaway. So let's show you what prizes we've got up for grabs and how you can win them. Yep, first prize up is one of Salomon's awesome golden trail running series, trucker caps looking pretty cool. But the guys also sent us one of their branded up insulated chili bowls, which looks really smart. Next on the list is a book that probably inspired me to get into the world of ultra running. It is Born to Run, a wicked book. I love reading it. I've probably read it three or four times, so a great read. We've also got a nice cotton tee from the guys at Hoka One One. And then a prize that, to be honest, I'd quite like to keep myself is a wicked selection of Stance uh, Crew Socks. Anyone who watches the channel or knows me knows I love a pair of Stance Crew Socks and these are some wicked designs. So a big bundle of Stance running socks up for grabs. We've also got three boxes, yep, three boxes of these awesome energy blocks from Lucho Delitos. We also contacted a brand that has featured on the channel before and they've actually supported us with a giveaway earlier in the year and it is the guys at Super Sparrow. They make some really Called cool double walled insulated bottles. So they sent us lots of their cool bottles in funky colours to give away. Another brand that has just featured on the channel in our nighttime running essentials and an item of running kit that I was super impressed with. Amazing high vis at a really good value. The BTR High Viz Reflective Gilet. The guys at BTR have been super supportive of the channel since we did the video and they've actually sent us three of their wicked gilets to add into our prize pot. Next super cool prize on the list is coming from the mean streets of Copenhagen and it's from Danish brand Say Sky. Anyone that follows the channel knows that I have fallen in love with this brand. Uh, I spend a lot of my time running in their kit super functional, great materials, well thought out, but it also looks really cool. Some of their designs and prints are wicked, and they have sent us one of their very cool running jackets, and this is some jacket. How cool is this Checker Pace Anorak sent down from Say Sky to go in the giveaway pot? Don't worry, you're not gonna win this one. This one's mine. The winner will be able to get a jacket in their specific size, but this isn't the only running apparel that we've got in the giveaway pot, and it's not the only apparel from Copenhagen, Denmark, We've also got some wicked running kit from the guys at Doxa Run. Yep, the guys at Doxa Run have sent down an awesome bundle of their running kit. So we have t-shirts, singlets, running caps, a wicked selection of their kit, but we've also got one of their one of their awesome windstop gilets. Uh, I fell in love with this bit of kit since reviewing it on the channel. I've hardly had it off. Perfect for winter running. Really, really nice wind layer, super lightweight, nice and vented on the back, and it stuffs down really small if you want to put it in your running belt. So there's some top prizes from Doxa Run. And last but not least, we contacted Kate from Harrier Trail Running, and she has been so supportive of the channel, and she has offered to give the winner a running pack of their choice, so it can be either the five litre or the 10 litre in the size of your choice and the color of your choice. But not only that, she's also offered one of her super cool new running caps again in your style and your color so you can see guys we have got some wicked prizes up for grabs the brands have been so supportive so show them some love but we just wanted to show you our appreciation for all the support that you've given us over the years getting to 10,000 subs so I'm sure you're all at home wondering what do I need to do to win all these running goodies well this is what you've got to do Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and get in the comments down below what prizes would you love to win and why would you like to win them. Give us a cheeky follow on Instagram and on the post on Instagram for this video, tag in your running buddies so they can have a chance of entering the giveaway extravaganza. So what we're gonna do, because we got so many wicked prizes, we're gonna split the prize pot into two main prizes and one runners up prize, just so more people have the opportunity of winning some running goodies 
But that's all the prizes up for grabs, guys, and that is how you get entered into the giveaway extravaganza. But thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support over the years, helping us get to 10,000 subs. It really is appreciated. But as always, stay safe and keep on running.